G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Sporting it over on the south side of the map, playing as the Delhi Soldat in the blue, we've got 3DB. On the opposite side of the map, spawning in as the Red Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Marine Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Road to Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. We're back at it again, once again, with the brand new map. We've got the basin for you guys today. I don't think I've shown this map on the channel before. It's been in the Red Bull Wallalo pool for quite some bit, but let's talk a little bit about this and about why certain civilizations might be very good here. So it starts off with a very high outside of the map, similar to Mongolian Heights. Towards the middle of the map, it gets much lower, very open in the center. It's kind of like a battle dome almost. And then finally, on the edges of the map, you've got these sort of uh, stealth forests that, that sort of ring around the outsides like that. You get a lot of resources that are out towards the corners uh, with your large gold mines uh, off to the side as well, bore in the middle. So let's talk about, you know, why would you expect to see Delhi on this map? Well, this is why you would expect to see Delhi on this map. Take a look at how close this sacred site is to 3db here. He's going to be super happy with this because it guarantees him that he's got 150 gold a minute in the pocket every single well every single minute of the game until until the game is over from about that seven or seventh or eighth minute and how impossible would it be to actually get the sacred site victory here can you imagine trying to get calm down lady we're, uh, we're a minute and 37 seconds through this game and you're already screaming at me like that you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer the show has only just begun <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it, dude. If if you if the YouTube algorithm could pick up the induendo that I just put out there, this video would be demonetized quicker than you can say. Oh, um, you know what? I'm not gonna say it. Let's let's not get into that. But uh, yeah, th this is largely why. So it, it's basically just about fighting over one sacred site. It kind of reminds me a little bit of High View. In High View, the only difference is that sacred site's all the way out in the corner. But it's very difficult for your enemy to actually, you know, attack that corner sacred site. But not not as difficult as something like this, uh, where it would be very difficult to contest. You know, you, basically your defensive outposts here are also going to be defending the sacred site. So it makes it super, super good for him here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we've got in the pocket for B, what, what strategies he looks to go for marine lord on the other side obviously playing as the abbasid dynasty he loves this civilization up against the uh up against the delhi he likes this matchup quite a lot there's a lot of players who think it's a pretty even matchup i think it's a bit abbasid favored abbasid have got a pretty good lean in to the delhi and what the delhi want to do because the delhi typically what you'd expect them to do is go for that one town center opening uh and then look to go for the sacred sites and then get up to age three build up a pretty decent mass and then finally pick up those relics then eventually stampede over your enemy with large amounts of elephants and scholars and spearmen and archers and all the good stuff. But I, I guess the Abbasid do a very good job at countering that in that they can keep up with the Delhi and they can scale with the Delhi at the same time. So that's the big thing that you're able to keep up and then that you're also able to scale on top of that. Now, there are exceptions to that rule, obviously. You know, there are rare circumstances where the, the Abbasid dynasty doesn't always get to keep up with the uh, with the Delhi, you know, specifically when their stone potentially might be attacked. If you've got an early outpost, it means they can't ever get that second town center down. Makes it very hard for them to defend. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty easy. Back in the base of B, though, we'll take a look and see what he's got going on. We can see Piety is in the queue. He's already got that efficient production out, up and running. Survival Technique's going to be coming in for him after that wheelbarrow. No real surprises there. And we've got ourselves a Tower of Victory again. He is doing it once again. You know, often I talk about, you know, trop, stop trying to make fetch work. But B, he, he, he's making fetch a thing. It is the Tower of Victory. I'm interested to see how this goes. You've got the world's, one of the world's best players. Arguably one of the world's best players. I mean, he's up there with... with he's top two 100 percent. either him or beastie number one number two i mean at this point in the game you can basically call both of them rank one and rank two uh either way you want so we've got one of the world's best players over here he's gonna be going up against a tower of victory so for me this is like the real test of the tower of victory you know we often talk about the tower of victory it's a bit of a meme you know sometimes you see b pull it out and he, it, it 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 works but it's like well you know did he kind of get lucky well now we're gonna see if he actually gets lucky because if he's able to pull this off i tell you what it, it, you're just gonna see it spike you're gonna see it go absolutely everywhere or all, all over the ranked ladder all that good stuff now a little bit of harassment coming in from Marine Lord on those gold mine villages. Great to see. You can see that the village actually getting stuck a little bit there by the scout. A little bit of an interruption. The scholar out here just doing some healing as well. Just making sure that those villages don't actually ever have to move back. Five villages on gold. Now this is because he cannot afford uh, to make enough scholars 
Well, he's not able to make scholars through the uh, the Dome of the Faith. So he makes a second mosque, and now you can see he's training up scholars. So still a heck, like a heavy amount of scholars are going to be coming out, but he needs to put more villages on gold, at least initially. And the idea here behind this is that he's going to be looking to get sanctity as quickly as possible and take this sacred site as quickly as possible. That's going to give him 150 gold a minute. And how much does a scholar cost? 150 gold, baby. So that's going to guarantee him one scholar every minute for the rest of the game. And then obviously, if he takes the second sacred site, that's going to be two scholars a minute that is going to be guaranteed. So beautiful little opening from him over on this side of the map we'll tune in over on the other side though where marine is marine is marine lord <laughs> you guys remember marine lord it's a uh, marine lord's special cousin uh well he's not playing today but we do have marine lord uh so we'll check in with him and see how he's doing definitely looking like he's going to be going for that second town center we can see wheelbarrows obviously through he's also got the economic upgrade fresh food stops and now looking to drop down a barrack so a very early barracks here i'm not sure what the thinking is behind this so he's obviously scouted out the stable uh from b so he knows look we've it's probably better to be safe than sorry let's just get a couple of spears out that way we can at least avoid any kind of silly billy harassment that's going to come down inevitably you know he's got nine vills on stone here i would suspect is once he cashes in that 300 is he is he going for more is he is he playing like a 3tc style here uh, well, this is one of the best players in the world he's not going over 300 stone unless there is a valid reason i, th I think we've got three tcs on the card here which is kind of crazy and look at what we've got here we've got a little bit of a i don't even know what you call this a little bit of an early hunt so b knows that marine lord's going to want to put down a town center somewhere where's the best place to put it it's on a hunt it's on a hunt that's relatively close to berries it's on a hunt that's close to the sacred site that defends it and look what he does this is so cheeky i love it every game that i watch from b i'm always seeing new things learning new things he always just finds a way to be freaking annoying dude and that's what he's doing so well right here so b gonna come out and f i can't believe this this is so disgusting it's just it's so cheeky right like it, it it's it reminds me of remember when i was talking about it in a couple videos earlier where um the, the concept of uh, laming exists where you, you basically in age of empires 2 if you take your enemy's sheep it's considered lame and it's it's frowned upon within the community like this is lame dude this is so annoying like i want to put my town center over on these deer and now look how far away they are you gotta be careful here he's actually gonna be looking to pick up that scout he manages to get the stabby stabby on it trades out the, the horseman for a scout spots the town center location but you can see just how far away like realistically the, the look at the deer, the deer carcasses so he's gonna have to prioritize going for the berries here but we'll check back over on the other side as the map of the map is marine lord goes for the classic spearman raid <laughs> down on the villager uh he's gonna get picked up here you can see marine lord has gathered up all of that stone for the, the third town center now and that sacred site is getting captured B going to be the one looking to take it down and we've actually got a second town center coming down for b as well so looking to be a little bit defensive uh it looks like the horseman did go down but now the scout going to be trying its best does get the kill scout oh, arrow pointing to the right spearman second sacred site in the center was going to get captured up or at least moved out towards this position I, I love this play from b forcing forcing marine lord now saying hey come on you you want to challenge me challenge me i know you've gone for an, enough stone to make two tcs but have you got enough resources there to make a second unit and now those spears going to be coming out we could see he's got just a single archer a single horseman and a single scholar and the question is going to be who wins here I, I got my money right now i got my money on the delhi player because more reinforcements going to be coming in S sacred site is being captured the scholar needs to come over and look to heal up the archer here this archer does have the buffed up tower of victory attack speed on here is going to be moving up the sacred site as long as the scholar stays on the ticking keeps ticking the ticking keeps talking rather and slowly but steadily we do see that spearman is going to get taken out and with that be in a great position early on nine minutes into this game he's going to be able to pick up three of or rather two of the sacred sites third one highly unlikely that he ever takes that but we do see the third tc coming down for marine lord and a classic unfortunate move i don't know why the ai does this whenever you build a town center and you don't shift queue them they will all move onto a like a wood i don't know why they do it you can build it in the middle of a giant deer herd and they'll be like yeah we're just gonna go chop some stragglers it's like no go to the deer like why are you prioritizing the stragglers second sacred site captured second tc down for b take off everything on this guy's bucket list right now he is doing it all and he's doing it really well this is tough for marine lord <laughs> i mean uh, for me I i'm still in awe at that early play that we saw from b coming through uh with the uh survival techniques is coming i think yeah he's got professional scouts he's got professional scouts he's he he's he's looking he's trying to steal he's trying to steal marine <laughs> marine lord's deer carcasses you are so cheeky b it, it's it's just i don't know when he researched it he's obviously researched it. i guess he's got more than one mil 
He's got a second mill. So he, he's got a second mill down. So he's just decided to research that. Th that's just, it's hilarious. Where does he come up with this stuff? Like, who would have thought that, like, if I told you three months ago, like, oh, trust me, the, the next overpowered Delhi strategy is going to be Tower of Victory into two TCs into professional scouts. They'll never see it coming. And you would never see it coming. You would never suspect that. Now that central sacred site completely walled in. We do see a gate coming up there. So Marine Lord definitely going to be tough to try and contest this. We'll check in with BC how he's doing. Still training up Scholars. He's got plenty of gold in the bank. All the villagers have moved off gold. He's going to continue training. It's double production for the Scholars here. Keep in mind he's got 300 gold a minute passively coming in. The remaining gold that he does have ticking over was from those villagers. Now we see more and more houses being added in where the, the lumber camps or where the forest once was. Beautiful little spot over on this eastern side as he continues making villagers. He's sitting on 41 at the moment with those two sacred sites. Compare that over to Marine Lord, who's sitting on 50. So he's keeping up with Marine Lord, but to a... Like, I, I guess the realistic thing is, like, typically in this matchup, what you would see is 2TC versus 1TC. Here we see 3TC versus 2TC. And obviously, there's a bigger difference in that first rather than in the former. Or rather, in, in, rather than the latter. Uh, but uh, we've, got the, uh, we've got the Scholar trying to make a run for it to the gates. I suspect he's not going to be, unfortunately, living too long. And Marine Lord, sensing that there may be blood in the water, he's got the camel out as well. You can see the, the horseman just going to be running straight through to the camel, realizing that's the priority target. You want to avoid that damage reduction coming through, and indeed it does get picked off. At the same time, a spearman going to be coming out now for his opponent. B going to be looking to try and hold on. It's, uh, it's that double spearman that he's going to force back this position and make sure that Marine Lord can't really contest this. You can see that tri-composition coming out for, for B in this early stage of the game. It's very, very nice. I'm loving the way that he's playing it so far. Look at the production that he's got back here as well. Tower of Victory just doing a great job of, of buffing up all the relevant uh, production buildings. But now Marine Lord looking very strong in this central location. Look at where did the horsemen just come from? Marine Lord sitting on like 27 stables all of a sudden. Calm down, Red. That's hyperbole. I don't actually mean that he's got 27 stables. It is just it is just a saying. It's, it's just a, it's just an exaggeration for the purpose of effect. Calm down. Uh, but uh, it's going to force him back for the moment. Now, interestingly, your infantry with the Delhi can't repair the wall, but you can delete the wall and then just rebuild it. Uh, so it will cost you a little bit to do that. Uh, but I guess it's really negligible if, if you're just going to be repairing. You know, it, it's a, th a thousand plus resources there. Spears getting in. Nice little trade at the front. Now, ideally, you don't want only the spears fighting. You want everybody fighting and the spears also fighting at the same time because otherwise the spears will get picked off uh, and they, they don't want to live dangerously. Look at the scholar pool coming in right now from 3DB. So many damn scholars out on this field. He's got nine scholars out right now at 12 minutes into this game. It's an absolutely huge amount. And you can see that he has definitely prayed in the right direction. These guys are healing up like madmen. And keep in mind, we do not have have that scholar healing bonus that doesn't come in until the castle age hobel medicine it did used to be i think it was a dark age uh, upgrade at, w at one point but uh not gonna be the case anymore it has been rightfully nerfed marine lord <laughs> i'm starting to worry he's got a nice stack of food in the bank but he's gonna need more than that if he wants to get these units out he's gonna need production as well we'll ride on board with him and see how he goes but oh my lord look at the amount of cavalry he's got in here looking to try and surround all of the spears he's gonna do a pretty decent job of this and now the question is gonna be whether these scholars are gonna be able to hold on and whether they're gonna be able to heal up the army we'll hold and have a look at all of the units here make sure that we've got them selected so you can see the health bars as the heals continue coming out you can see him just dumping heals into all these units on the front line look at this one in particular over on the left side the horseman just staying alive right now the bg is playing just on repeat as the scholar does go down we can see at the moment he's down to 13 scholars she's down to 13 scholars things are getting tough when delhi's down to 13 scholars look at the hold marine lord slowly looking to overwhelm his opponent though so things starting to look good for the Frenchman, but he's going to have to fall back from this position as more reinforcements do come in from the right of our screen. And the Scholars, once again, do a great job in repairing or healing up all of these units. And you can see it, it keeps reminding us as all of these these uh, Scholars keep on popping out. And he's just, he's it's impressive to me that he's able to fight with such a bare bones army here. Spearman now coming out as well for Marine Lord, realizing that he's going to start switching the composition. You can't just be running this two, this two unit comp against a three unit comp. You're only going to slowly but steadily bleed out because you, you just don't have the numbers or, or the, the compositions to deal with it. Scholars continue moving forward with the attack move. We'll take a look at how Marine Lord does on the defense. Beautiful micro round at the backside. He's going to start hitting down those archers. Does a great job, but at the same time, it looks like we might have a bit of an overextension here from B. He's further away from his own reinforcements and closer to Marine Lords, but at the same time, the Scholars keep their hands above their heads and heal like nobody's business, and they still try and find a way. The reinforcements keep coming in. There's a couple more spearmen. Things looking good at the moment for Marine Lord, but B looking to try and shift the angle of 
of attack away from that base and let's see if he focuses down on these town centers to the south of marine lord's base which is exactly where he needs to go if he wants to try and make this work attacking into the production is going to be very difficult all the production is up here for marine lords take a look and see what he's got at the moment two barracks three stables and two archery rangers so a total of seven production buildings will check in over with his opponent b and B running something similar, but keep in mind that he's got those scholars inside, which is going to be pumping out units nonstop. So two archery rangers, and a barracks, and a stable. So call it four archery rangers and two barracks and a stable. So both of them on the equivalent of seven production facilities. A single horseman being baited out away by those camel archers. B unfortunately not paying attention does lose a unit. It's a small amount of units though. How many scholars have we got out here? Ten scholars at the moment out here for B. More reinforcements coming across. And keep in mind, he's had two sacred sites this entire time. B just looking very good. He's got so much gold coming through. He's actually stopped training scholars for the moment. So I wonder if that's an indication of his intentions. Maybe he's thinking about going to castle. We'll double check on the village account. B on 71 villages right now. Now, typically, your Delhi player would be sitting on maybe about 50, maybe 48 villages at this point in the game. But he's on 71. That's the consequence of having that second town center. Compare that to his opponent who's on 95. Marine Lord, he's up by about 20 villages. But remember, the main difference is going to be that second sacred site and, and obviously the first one as well plays a huge role in balancing out this economy and you can see the numbers from b looking incredible as uh, the longer this game goes on b just going to continue to get all those upgrades and slowly he moves towards that castle age and starts to make th things a little bit more difficult for his opponent we can see that he, the resources in the in the bank not really moving in the direction of castle age actually second tier for golden age comes through from marine lord He's on 139 population. Cute little wall coming down from B. He's got to be careful. We'll enter into the cinematic mode now as units come around from all angles to try and come down on B's army. The horsemen get a beautiful surround on the backside. The walls have failed to go up, but the healers looking absolutely amazing on that backside. He's got to be careful not to run away too far. We can see the horsemen just looking to get a little bit further away. The camels on the backside doing a decent job of putting out DPS. Nice micro coming in, but the numbers looking overwhelming right now for our Delhi player. 3DB demonstrating the Tower of Victory. 2TC is an absolute beast to be reckoned with. Marine Lord, Marine Lord. He doesn't care whoever it is. He is going to take you out. You thought just because you're the world's best player or one one of the world's best player that you could just you could just beat 2TC Tower of Victory Delhi no get out of here this this ain't no meme this ain't no this is this is <laughs> this is this is a complete joke how is this working this is amazing I'm, I'm in awe honestly I'm in awe and now he gets the box up for anybody who doesn't know what the box is or what the purpose of the box is you can't penetrate the box the box penetrates you baby and now the archers from within inside the box able to hit off towards the units on the backside. He's continuing to siege down that second town center. It's going to be in the middle. Reinforcements coming in from the north, but the numbers not looking good for Marine Lord. The scholars continuing to heal up and pushing back the remaining forces of Marine Lord. He's trying to hold on a little bit longer, but you guys know this ain't going to be going the right way. It's going to be going the way of B. B looking incredibly good this game. I got to say, fellas, is this the new Delhi meta? Is this, are we witnessing it right now? Is B single-handedly changing the meta with his plays like this? It's just, to me, it's so impressive. The fact he's able to do this, I think a large contributing factor to his victory in, in this game has got to be that safe sacred site. The fact he's able to take it without too much uh, risk or too much uh, commitment means that he's so strong and good game gets called. Marine Lord will tap out. Fellas, what an absolute game right there from B. If you guys have enjoyed this, make sure you check out the Road to Rebel Wallalow Legacy. It's happening this weekend. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it. Do not miss it. There's going to be plenty of action, plenty more games from legends like this.